Hello and welcome to Paradise Wildlife Park for everyone who's watching this on Metro. My name is Aaron and I'm here at Paradise Wildlife Park and I'm joined by one of our bird keepers, Rob, and our awesome African penguins. Who, as you can see, are just coming over for their feed time. So Rob, what are we actually feeding the penguins? So of course these guys eat fish, and uh, in particular we are giving these guys sprats. Now naturally out in the wild, African penguins would eat fish like anchovies, sardines and sprats. Uh, but we give these guys just sprats and that's purely because these are the best nutritional valued fish for our penguins and they're also sustainably sourced as well. And Rob, what species of penguin do we actually have here at Paradise? So we've got African penguins here at Paradise and you can find these guys all the way from South Africa up the coast towards Namibia. And they tend to inhabit colonies of around anywhere between two to 10,000 individuals. But here at Paradise, we have 19 individual African penguins. And uh, how many species of penguin are there actually, Rob? So there is 18 different species of penguin in total. Um, in fact, there are a lot of people think that penguins do come from cold climates, but there's actually only two that solely live and breed on Antarctica. And that is the emperor penguin and the gentoo. Others might come into the ocean uh, to be able to look for food and so on. But most penguins do come from warm climates and they're all from south of the equator. So the most northern penguin in the world is actually the Galapagos penguin, as its name suggests, is found on the islands of Galapagos. But these guys, as I said, from Africa, then you've got the Humboldt from South America, uh, the Little Blue or the Fairy is found in Australia, and the largest penguin in the world is, of course, the Emperor Penguin, which is found uh, on Antarctica. And uh, can you just tell us um, just about what it's like to manage the penguins on a daily basis here at Paradise? So what's your daily routine when it comes to looking after the penguins? So our daily routine here at Paradise always starts by giving our guys a bit of a health check. So we look over them, make sure everyone is happy and healthy. And then of course we do come out to feed them. So when we feed these guys in the morning, they usually have around anywhere between three to six kilos of fish a day, depending on how hungry they are. But in the morning, we do give these guys a couple of different supplements to help them out. So we give them something called an aqua mini vit, which we put in the fish. And that is basically just to replace any sort of minerals and nutrients that is lost through the defrosting process. And we also give them a sodium chloride tablet as well. Now the sodium chloride tablet is basically to replace any natural salts that they would have lost uh, because of course in the wild they would naturally eat quite salty fish. And then throughout the rest of the day we basically clean their enclosure and then they get fed uh, just after lunchtime, so about one o'clock, and then also around uh, about now or so, which is their last feed of the day. And depends on the weather as well, can affect when how hungry our penguins actually are. At the moment we are currently giving them around two kilos of fish because these guys are uh, relatively hungry at the moment, although they're not seeming to shove it at the moment. So hopefully a few fish in the pool will encourage them in uh, to have some of their dinner. All right, in they go. Now, obviously you can just see one of the penguins having a swim around there. Rob, just how fast can penguins swim? So penguins can actually swim up to speeds of about 30 miles an hour, but it's not a continuous speed. They would mainly uh, swim up to 30 miles an hour in short bursts of speed. And that is primarily to catch their prey, and in this case fish, or of course indeed escape from predators like sharks or uh, other marine mammals that might want to fancy a penguin as a snack. But these guys have got a couple of ways to actually avoid being eaten. One of which is called porpoising, which is where they'll reach these high short burst speeds of around 30 miles an hour. They'll zigzag left and right in the ocean or in the pool in this case. And that creates like a jet stream of bubbles which confuses the predator. And uh, of course they have got something called counter shading or counter camouflaging as well. Now looking at our penguins, they do stick out a bit like a sore thumb here at Paradise on our beach, but they've got those black backs and the white bellies for a reason. So if you're a bird of prey, which might be one of our penguin's predators, and you're looking down on a penguin in the ocean, all you're gonna see is a black back against the depth of the ocean. Likewise, if you are a shark coming from below, all you're gonna see is a white belly against the bright sky. So in that respect, they actually are quite good at camouflaging. And uh, some look like they've got a full tuxedo, whereas <laughs> others don't quite look like they've made that full tuxedo transformation just yet. Not quite Can you explain yet. the difference as to why some look a little bit different to others? Okay, so at the minute, quite a lot of our penguins do look slightly different. So you might be able to see down the front here, we have a Tamboti, and Tamboti has got a full black plumage at the moment. And that's because Tamboti is one of our chicks from the previous year. We also have Menena, who's right next to him as well. Uh, now, these guys do take about 18 to 24 months from when they are uh, sort of born to or hatched to be able to actually reach their full plumage. So some of our penguins do look a little bit scruffy at the moment and that's because they are going through their annual molt, which happens every single year. Our penguins usually take around two weeks to go through their full molt, but in the wild it might take a little bit longer. And it's basically they get rid of all their old feathers and push out some new ones coming out looking pearly white and nice and clean. 
So penguins only do this perhaps once a year, usually around the same time of year. Whereas other bird species, because they fly around a lot, they'll tend to perhaps do it throughout the whole year. Whereas these guys, because of course they are flightless birds, they only do it around this sort of time of year and get it done over pretty quickly. So I imagine it is quite uncomfortable for them and also quite warm as well. Now, this may sound like a silly question, but do penguins actually have feathers? Obviously we know that birds that fly do, and we know that even birds that can't necessarily fly like emus do, but with penguins it always seems very difficult to tell. So what is the actual story with a penguin's coat? So it, do, it does look very streamlined, if you like. Um, they do have feathers. Um, I can't exactly tell you how many feathers they have. It's an awful lot amount. I know for a fact that they do have the most amount of feathers of any bird in the world per cubic inch of their body, which is an awful lot. And it's mainly used for various insulation qualities, keeping them warm when they are swimming around in the oceans as well. Um, but yes, they do have a very thick layer of feather, as you can probably see on some of them who are going through their molts at the moment. And of course our pool is at the moment filled up with tiny little bird feathers. And uh, can you just explain why some of them have got little armbands on? Okay, so the armbands are for several different reasons. Uh, now it actually help us, helps us identify the penguins as individuals. So the females always have their tag on the right wing, whereas males have their tag on the left wing. Now uh, the coloured bands, that actually tells us who is paired up with whom. So penguins are monogamous, which means they will pair for life once they have found their partner. So the bands or coloured bands tell us who is paired up with who. So for example, uh, the best I can give you an example of is the black band is Jabari and Nandi. They are quite a new uh, recently formed pair. Uh, we also have Albert and Akiki who have the yellow bands on. And then you might notice as well with such as young Makuzi who is just at the forefront of the pool there. Makuzi has a yellow band with those white beads on. And the different coloured beads on there actually tells us whether they are the first or second or even third generation of chicks that the uh, adult pair have had. Now it looks like one of them is losing his feathers. Can you just explain why that penguin looks like that? Yep, so that one over there is uh, Jabari, or Nandi, sorry. Uh, now these guys have said they do go through their annual molt every single year. And around this sort of time, they get rid of all their old feathers and come out the other side with basically fresh new ones. And they do come out the other side looking very, very white and very clean. So I know that, for example, Makuzi, who is the furthest on the left at the moment, uh, Makuzi has actually recently gone through her first molt. So she did uh, look like Tamboti down here at the front to start. She had all black plumage. And now she's coming out the other side looking like a fully adult penguin. Awesome, and uh, just from a conservation perspective, where do African penguins sit on the IUCN red list, for example? So on the IUCN red list, African penguins are unfortunately classed as endangered. And there is a few different reasons for this. Uh, so for example, global uh, warming is one of the issues. So as the, uh, the temperature of the world rises, the ice caps melt, and therefore the fish in the ocean think this is a bit cold, I'm gonna go move to warmer ocean, which of course takes away the natural food source of our penguins. Uh, unfortunately, they do face some land problems as well. So these guys, it might sound quite disgusting, disgusting, but for them it is quite normal. They use their own poo as a nesting material, and there's a special word for that called guana. Now, guana is a very, very good fertilizer as well. So unfortunately, their nests are raided by farmers to uh, use as uh, fertilizers for their crops. And unfortunately, although it is illegal, some of their nests are also raided for their eggs as well. As much as things like plastic as well, uh, these guys are faced on the uh, as in, cast as endangered. Um, but we are helping our guys here at Paradise. We have been actually very, very successful over the past few years. I believe since uh, 2015, we've actually had around 12 chicks here at the zoo, uh, which is really, really good, aimed towards their captive breeding program. And they are managed by a stud keeper that looks after the uh, genetics of the penguins across Europe. And then the hope that we have uh, safeguarding the species. So these guys are ambassadors for their wild cousins. Awesome. Well, uh, as you can see, Rob is just going to continue to feed the penguins the rest of what is effectively now their dinner. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to leave you guys so that, or leave these guys so they can continue enjoying eating their fish in a bit of privacy. But we hope you guys have enjoyed tuning in and hopefully you've learned a few things about penguins that you may not have known before. Um, and hopefully Rob's given you lots of information about penguin conservation. Obviously one thing that really helps us with our conservation work is raising awareness. And one way that you can help us with that is sharing this video. Now obviously throughout this coronavirus pandemic we do hope that you are staying home, staying safe and listening to the government's advice. In the meantime we're still going to be here taking care of the animals because obviously they do need our care and attention. 
um, so that we can provide the best welfare possible for them. Obviously, it is still a bit of a struggle just because we have no income coming into the zoo whatsoever at the moment, and it is still costing us around £200,000 a month to take care of the animals. So if anyone out there is willing to help us from a donation standpoint, then please visit our Just Giving page, go to justgiving.com and then Animal Support Fund, or go to our website, which is pwpark.com. But in the meantime, stay home, stay safe, and we look forward to welcoming you back to paradise when this pandemic is over. Take care, guys. Bye.